Mr. Siddharth Menon. Chi. Sid Menon. Yes, yes, yes. Hello. Welcome. Hi. Thank, hello. Thank you. Hello, hello. Thank yeah. you for having me. Neha happens to be here as well. Yes. Uh, so tell us uh, a bit uh, about yourself before we start. Uh, Who are you? Well, I'm Sid Menon. Uh, well, uh, what else is there actually? <laughs> I like space a lot. Uh, I would say I would like to call myself an aspiring hippie, so I guess that's there. I don't really want to talk about uh, career and shit because that doesn't really matter. So uh, it doesn't. Nah, yeah, yeah. That's, nah, that's, that's really true. doesn't. Yeah. <laughs> it really doesn't. Uh, and yeah, I guess that's about it. Yeah, mm. that's me. Yeah. So yeah, I guess so. Uh, you know, uh, yesterday was John Lennon's birthday. We're uh, recording this on October tenth. October 9th was his birthday. Uh, I actually introduced her to Sergeant Peppers last week for the first time. Blew her Holy mind. Holy shit. My yes. favorite album I, I of all time. It. My yeah, favorite album of all time. It's his favorite album as well. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, I mean, yeah. Uh, and it's, it's it's interesting. Like, so I, I know I know that John Lennon was a huge influence on you. was a huge influence on me. Oh, yeah. So, what do you think about his message resonates 40 years uh, after his death? So, I think what John Lennon was... Uh, at that time, if he was someone that you could look up to because he was, uh, he was first of all very popular from the Beatles era and uh, he gained a lot of fame and popularity from there and then he, he started getting into political activism. And at that point, you know, everyone started getting into this counterculture movement and you needed someone to unify you guys, everyone together and you had him to look up to. And the thing is, we have an absence of that figure in today's world which is why the last most prominent figure was him and even now till date is uh, he was a very peculiar character as well you know he was not just a normal person he was eccentric and he mm. he had very amazing ways to spread his message so i guess that's why even after his death he still lives on in, uh, all of us basically yeah, he's typically counted up there with like Martin Luther King, Malcolm X, John Lennon. Like he right. achieved like that legendary status. Like exactly, like, just in that gap of ten years after the Beatles break up and his assassination, right? Oh, it's pretty God, cool. Yeah. That is, yeah. he's done a really, he's done a lot of stuff actually, considering what how yeah, long he's lived. Yeah. yeah, it's crazy that people who who, who preach nonviolence and peace dead Mahatma Gandhi dead Martin Luther yeah. King dead Malcolm X dead John Lennon dead it's John like F Kennedy dead really you know? cruel irony yeah yeah so why is it like why do you think this is though like you know like um why like why are these kind of ideas considered radical uh, uh so the thing is I think it questions the norms of society and mm-hmm. most importantly it questions people in power so mm-hmm. Uh, what what all these uh, uh, figures we just listed out, what they had in common was questioning the right of people to, of certain people to, you know, have power over others. They were questioning their power. And once you question somebody's power, especially having uh, political power over, you know, a huge number of people, they get insecure and they tend to fight back and see you as a threat, especially when you have influence over others. And mm. that's why I think all of them basically ended up dead, getting shot at. Uh, you know, it's, 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 they're basically public enemy number one. Mm. And it's interesting that even today, right? Like, although we have this huge explosion, like social media and like voices, we still don't have a figure like that to look up exactly. to. Exactly. We still don't have a figure Wonder why. Like Wonder why. I, I actually yeah. want to sort of understand what would help you or what would make you want to look up to someone. What would be the qualities that would probably See, uh, make you want to look up to? Obviously, the person has to be genuine, right? Uh, mm-hmm. What he says, he does, or what he says, he thinks. He or she, basically. Mm-hmm. And of course, it, uh, you, I mean, I'm sure I'm, there are many people like me who think the same way, or obviously you guys as well. But it's someone who has the power to bring us all together. Uh, that kind of person who can, you know, make you go like, yeah, this guy, he's saying, he's speaking sense and everyone else is for listening to him. Like when, when John Lennon held a peace protest or a rally, people turned up in you know, huge amounts. And that's why when you look at popular figures who do spread that message, 
strongly spread that message. You know, he he held uh, uh, he was he was a revolutionary. He did not he 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 basically protested everything. He had these very different ways to spread his message. So when you look at all of this and combine, that's when you look like when you think that yeah, you know, this is what a sort of idol to be. Mm-hmm. That kind of person will have a tendency to bring people together. And the thing is, right. for that to happen, you require celebrity status. If if John Lennon did not have that, I think it would be pretty hard for him to have gained the followership he did. So that's, I think, a bit of a downfall that you require a bit of celebrity status to get that across. Mm-hmm. Right. So, you know, when you talk about bringing people together and now we are when we are looking around the world and what's happening around all of us i think the what we see usually is a lot of segregation a lot of discrimination against okay people from these castes belong here people from these religion are put into one group people from certain political ideologies are put into a different group so what we are seeing now is kind of the opposite of what the message of uh, john lennon was or uh, you know, the message for humanity that was peace and love, right? right? So, yeah, so when you think about it, what do you think are the are the factors that are contributing to this kind of a society, this kind of a uh, state that we are in at the moment? Uh, so, I think it, first of all, it has to do with social stigma. So, mm-hmm. when the time at which John Lennon was, you know, at his height, the government of us basically went 100 percent against him they threw everything at him they tried to get him deported they uh you know they put up slogans that you know if, if you're following this you're basically a, a hippie drunky junkie you painted this bad image on a society that if you are a person who follows this guy you are you know not a member of society and they came down pretty hard on him in many aspects and came down pretty hard on all his followers it's, it's it's almost like they crushed the revolution and because us has influenced that way and it was at the height of the cold war as well you had it that's influence spreading to other people other countries and before you knew it it was basically a social stigma to be a hippie or you know to believe in peace and love or you had this image that you know people who believe in that are freeloaders or don't contribute to society and you know, all those bad, bad images start coming up and that's why you do not, you know, his people don't, you have all this division. That's basically the way to, uh, you know, counter his message was always they were divided and rule. They would uh, stigmatize, polarize, you know, make people mm. turn against each other instead of seeing the bigger picture. Mm. Do you see that video about uh, Ben Shapiro reacting to um, John Lennon's Imagine, but how he trashes the song? No, no, I, never, I, 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 the moment I, check brought, it out, I, I think you sent me a Ben Shapiro video I saw, but the moment he started speaking, I was just like, no, <laughs> I'm not going to listen Very to this problem. guy, I don't like him. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> so I, I did not that. see any further videos of him. Yeah, um, yeah, it's, it's just that these ideas uh, remain polarizing today for some reason, you know, the whole unity and all that kind of stuff. It's pretty misunderstood. Hmm. Yeah, and uh, one of his, especially like one of his songs, right? The the Plastic Yono Band, I think uh, there was a song about God and re- religion, but how he rallied against that as well. Right. Yeah. To the, the one the big song that comes from it is obviously Imagine. You know, that is when... Uh, no, that was from his second album, I think. Right, um, right. No, when you speak about his message, in a way, mm, yeah, yeah. imagine that we, uh, you know, made a word. It was also very uh, controversial, that song. People lost their shit when he said, imagine no religion. Yeah, that's what, like, you know, mm-hmm. they, they lose their shit on the small, small stuff and they lose sight of the big picture. That's it. That's basically what happens. Mm-hmm. Right. So when we're talking about religion, right, at this point, I think we see a lot of uh, things happening, especially in India, when it comes to religious minorities, uh, you know, discrimination again, violence. And that is something that we we are seeing in our news channels every day. So right. what role do you think religion plays 
in uh, in any individual's life and what role does it play in your life at this point so when so this is how i see it uh people usually confuse it to and sometimes even lose sight of what it is so the way i understand it religion first started as a way to become spiritual they all 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 all, all religions you see had a bit of a spiritual start to it and uh, a mystical vibe right yeah a mystical vibe exactly exactly something explaining the bigger or the larger force mm. the universe or mm-hmm. Nice. It's just over time, religion became an institution. It mm. became like another ruling body of sorts. And uh, I'm sure even the people uh, right now who are uh, following a religion or whatever, many of them will. I I I'm uh, I, I'm I'm pretty certain of this because uh, many of them may not find a reason as to or come up with a reason as to why they are following it. Like mm-hmm. if 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 I want somebody to uh, realize that, I would just ask the person, like, "Why are you following this?" And mm-hmm. if if that question makes you go like, "Huh," then you know, you know, you've hit something that has just been you've considered as a grant granted for all this time. And uh, the, the the reason that is is because uh, because of religion being an institution, it can be used to polarize people. It can be, and because India is full of blind passionate people you know this population has turned uh, india into basically a mass mob everyone mm-hmm. has this mass mob mentality everyone gets you know ridden into waves and just just uh, so it's they're so you know you know this so eager to get a point and pick a side and just blind hate against the other and mm-hmm. you know uh, uh, people in power can use this as a tool to divide society and that's why you have this violence as you said the riots and mm-hmm. of course the major the biggest tool uh, both literally and double on tundra word is the media that is the biggest tool that they use they have this uh, media that uh, oh i have i've 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 seen a lot because i don't really follow uh, uh, this particular channel but uh, it's been playing on my home here all the time and wonder what you're talking about huh? <laughs> i wonder what you're talking about <laughs> yeah 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 let's not Please. take names yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, i think yeah. i think the nation would want to know what we're talking about so oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah so uh, uh the message is spread is so oh my god it's scary right you have this they they twist the facts they turn it the other side they add a bit of a dash to it, add a bit of uh, stigmatize and you suddenly got yourself a message where it's like if you do not act against this group or community, you are under threat. And obviously the mass viewership of you, this tells you how many people are watching this and if you watch this every day or you know, if you keep getting this content, you are bound to start leaning towards or you know, unless you keep a, a sense of things. So, that's so this thinking. raises a, a deeper question, right? My opinion about um, where do you draw the line when it comes to ethical journalism? Because at the end of the day, it is a business and you will right. gravitate towards what gives you more views. So how could you possibly incentivize ethical journalism, in your opinion? Uh, ethical journalism, how do you incentivize that? Uh Oh, let's start with what is ethical journalism? Like, what are the parameters? Like, how do you even? So, uh, I think ethical yeah. journalism is just basically stating facts. I think I've, I've had this discussion before also, and I totally still stand by it. It's just stating facts as they are. This happened. This happened. If you say this happened because of this, then you're coming up with something that you don't have a concrete, unless you have right. concrete evidence. It's and, an interpretation, right? Right. Of yeah. The event itself. Yeah. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So, if you go a bit wild on your interpretations that's not ethical i think because it's misleading the public it's misleading your viewers now the, the way to incentivize that I, I think this is going to sound very controversial is if it's public funded you won't have to de- depend on viewership obviously it calls into question the fact that the government is in control of it but it, it really has to be an independent body but that has a 
constant fun because if you have something depending on viewers then obviously you're going to use stigmatized sources especially in a country like India where people get hyped up over entertainment and masala like which, which is just mm-hmm. nonsense news which doesn't isn't isn't news at all it's just I don't know if I have the words for it it's just a circus basically Would you trust Modi more or Arnab Goswami? <laughs> oh my god Hmm uh i guess if it was to it was if i if i got to my head and i had to choose who to trust more i think i would go with modi like because uh, those all is just yeah i can hear the parades already in the distance <laughs> oh, but why didn't say that <laughs> uh well if if there are two people who are going to be fooling me i'd rather that the pain man and self come up to me and tell me in my face rather than some random drink master so that's why i said that <laughs> right i think uh, everything that you are saying is making a lot of sense to me uh and you know when i thought about when we talk about religion right and how it's been impacting our lives and how we are sort of conditioned to think and consume and internalize everything we are watching and everything we are hearing um i also somewhere feel like people tend to internalize this because we all want to have some kind of instruction to as to how to live my life or what to exactly do with my life and i would want some entity to tell me what to do and how to do things in my life and religion in that sense i think does provide that kind of an instruction manual that we are all looking for for our lives and it also somewhere stems from the fact that we are all so culturally rooted that we are not really uh ever taught to think how you know how what else can i do or how can i think differently or how can i uh write down the instructions as to how i want to live my life and the ideas i want to propagate So what are your thoughts on that? Uh so see the thing is uh religion obviously most people uh, that I I think I've been asked the question on Reddit like why do you guys follow religion and I got the answer most mainly this that uh, to give me a purpose to life or uh some were mm-hmm. saying uh, it tell me how to live my life and the issue I see with this is sure I mean even today to date the question still boggles me as to why why do you want something else to tell you how to live your life or why do you, why do you want uh, to follow rules instead of you know doing something that you abide by your principles and that's what i think i think people need to question more people need to question stuff more it's not just taking stuff for granted like if somebody tells you you can't do this ask why mm-hmm. Like I remember as a kid, I I used to ask why a lot. Oh my God, I used to bug mm-hmm. my parents ask why a lot, and I I I I think people uh, have this notion that if your kid asks why a lot, he's undermining your authority or he's questioning you. And when you punish a kid for asking why, you're basically stopping him from being curious or her from being curious and exploring the world for what it is a large playground. But mm-hmm. when you crush that it's basically you are conditioning the mind to never question authority and to just follow rules you're basically being raised up for whatever purpose the other person has set up and if you are if you really think about it, if you're comfortable with that which i'm sure not even many people know that's what they're doing it's just that how deep the conditioning is so i think I, I people do internalize internalize religion but i think that's a conditioning that they've been uh have that they that they that they've been forced to have by parents uh, in society in a pressure filled society and i think the only way to do that is to question everything so uh you know so you personally right so what drove you to think differently because most people in the world are religious or they they do subscribe to these things right right so yeah so in, in your personal opinion or your your personal experience what actually drove you to change this mindset uh so i remember when i was a kid i, I as i told you i used to ask why a lot 
So I think my first uh, point when it came to question about the first pivotal point, not pivotal point, is something that really, really put, I think put me on something was uh, when I was a kid, I had a cousin and we were both like just chilling around the balcony. And he was, uh, he was pretty uh, religious, I would say. And uh, he told me that uh, God is everywhere. I was like, oh, really? He's God everywhere. He's God in that flower by there. And he's like, yeah, God is there. So I, and this is going to sound very evil, but I, I removed and opened the flower up to see if there's God inside. And I opened it and I showed it to him like, yeah, it's not there. He just started crying in front of me. And I think that's when, uh, you know, the term seeing is believing really made an impact there because only if you can witness something or feel something firsthand can you really believe something and then mm-hmm. this, the next point what happened was uh, I remember uh, there was uh, an incident uh, my sister got a bit hurt and I remember that everyone else was praying but at the end of the day it was medicine and the doctors and science that you know, saved her and also I got into science pretty young uh, eighth grade my dad handed me a book by Stephen Hawking you know uh, the brief history of time and when oh, I read Bible. that yeah yeah, yeah. The real Bible. yeah. <laughs> I swear dude and when, when I read that I just realized that there really was no point of uh, God I mean you had something else to explain the ways of the universe and that really got me into a tangent of first being agnostic because I was still at home, so I couldn't really go all out. And then once I moved to college, uh, atheist. <laughs> mm. So that's basically how it is. Although, although I'm I'm a spiritual person, I'm not. So that's a diff- there's a difference between the two. There's a uh, people think they're the same, but I'm not a religious person, but I am a spiritual person. So that's how it is. If you actually find it interesting that um, you you made the full switch to atheism only after you went to college or after right. you broke free from that uh, household right. how important do you think the environment is for uh, these belief systems oh it's very important so uh, especially in, in, uh, when you're uh, conditioned to so basically if, if, if you, as a kid when you're growing up you basically do things that you don't do things to irritate your parents or make them angry. Like those, those are negative emotions. You do stuff that only get you positive. Keep yourself, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you do stuff that, like, you do stuff that get you positive emotions. You get rewarded or you get a hug or, you know. It's only, the thing is, the stuff that you do that inside negative emotions are something that prevents you from doing it later on because you don't want the same thing. And, it's different when you're a kid and you're an adult. When you're an adult, you can deal with these negative emotions. You understand where they're coming from and you can understand there's a difference. But as a kid, a kid does not understand that. So when a kid does question regularly and he keeps getting or you know uh, keeps getting reprimanded or uh, scolded or God forbid beaten, you kind of uh, uh, condition the child not to question for himself or to uh, look out for the answers, just follow rules. And that's why I think the household is very important uh, as it is. Not that I was uh, under, mm-hmm. uh, not that I was subjected to all of this. Just it is it plays a very important uh, role. Right, right. So, you know, when we are looking at this fundamentally, right, the family environment, that's our primary environment that we are born into and uh, the first exposure that we have to any kind of uh, socialization, so to say, right? So what do you think can be done differently to sort of raise a child in a way that they can and they would want to explore different ideas, different philosophies and, you know, uh, what do you think needs to change when it comes to the environment? So first of all, I'd like I'd like to talk about uh, us as human beings in general. Hmm. Like, uh, why do you have always in every situation liberals and conservatives? Have we thought about that? Thing is, 
when you're a kid everything around you is new and you explore and your mind is more open and malleable to whatever you want it to be but as you grow up and you mature you your principles solidify your character becomes more uh, apparent and that's when your ability to question things is i wouldn't say is uh, goes away it's just that you ignore it or you just take things for granted very easily so which is why i when you're growing up as an adult so i'll come to children later so that's more easy actually adults is the one place where it every adult should i think actively be open minded because if you if you start getting deep rooted in your principles mm-hmm. without without being open minded to what another person is saying you're basically becoming conservative and which is why i feel like you should be actively open minded i'm saying actively because god we really hard because all these yeah. principles make you who you are so which is why even if i get into debate with someone who is speaking what i would presume is nonsense i would still listen to the guy evaluate what he's saying for myself and then decide if it is nonsense or not which is very hard thing to do if you think about it. like if somebody tells you like yeah bro or this value is like fuck off like you know you just say stuff like that and uh that's what i think as an adult you should do as a child it's very easy as a child you just go like why just ask him why or he'll ask you why and just be open to i should do this to my sister i remember when she was growing up i just go like so why does this happen why does this i should try and keep asking her questions to get her to respond and try to question her that's very what you do as a kid with kids basically. so related to this um, would you tell your 4 year old kid how babies are born that's not really relevant knowledge i mean if he ask me then i'll have to have to think about how to answer that that ties in into the whole scientific uh, um, uh, ideology and so on right like would you lie to your kid and then reveal the truth later would it lie or probably just say you know we'll come back to this later because it's it has to be something that the person can grasp that's what i feel mm. right okay so you know when we talking about this uh, and the the fact that you are open to listening open to understanding what different perspectives can bring into our lives and what i see around myself and uh, uh, most people are not really open to that they they don't want to listen to anything that's different that's that doesn't subscribe to what they already know and what do you think can be helpful in breaking this fear or breaking this pattern in which we are going ahead with our lives uh that again has to do with how you are brought up in society and hmm. i think you have parents you have means not, not parents you have your outside surroundings as society you have how you're brought up obviously and you have the government as well telling you stuff and how do you break that uh it's really it's honestly a really hard question to answer i think the only answer there is is question everything don't take anything for granted and if you can actively mm-hmm. practice that that you'll be along well and to be data driven right mostly uh, like data driven look at hard facts like numbers yeah, hard, rather hard than just facts. um qualifying uh information. yeah hard facts evidence or like even if you don't have evidence doesn't mean you have to pick a side so uh, one thing i notice is again when it comes to news or uh topics or whatever in the social media people get really really you know eager and stigmatized pick a side like just jump mm. pro or i've not seen any anti or whatever but they just just jump to one side and uh i don't really f- go into that because i want to read the news myself find out what really happened you know from whatever sources are available to me and then make a decision as to whether this is right or wrong and it's that blind you know jumping towards one thing that is again which is what people are conditioned to do they don't question just take it for granted and then it just dies out in like 24 hours and then there's the next issue and so on yeah and like it's, nothing it's a, really gets solved it's a, it's a rigmarole it's a circus that's what basically everything is in this government ruled and 
media news and all this stuff. It's mm. you know right. right. I also feel like you know when we talk about facts, when we talk about evidence and hardcore things that are tangible, things that you can quantify. I feel like human beings often don't function very rationally in a lot of situations, and uh, there's something that we learn in psychology that's called the the rational mind and the emotional mind, and there's this another concept of wise mind, which basically combines the two. So it's although it's very very it's very easy to say or to think that you know we should look at evidence we should be looking at the facts we are very emotionally driven as well and that's often also a reason why uh we feel so emotionally charged up to say uh pick a side or to support a cause to not support a cause or to be uh you know all of these things that we see on social media these days about how one person is villainized and the other person is considered a hero and we feel very emotionally charged up to support either of these sides right, right? and i feel like there's a fundamental gap that lies between uh in most individuals and maybe at different points of time in our lives as well where we are not able to bring together the rational mind and the emotional mind so right. yeah what do you think about that uh well i just think if you uh so basically i think everyone has actually faced this when you make decisions in an emotional mental state uh decisions especially that you regret when you look back on it after some time you realize that oh shit i should not have done that you know i should not have uh said that so what i think is when when you are faced with such circumstances wherein they tend to be emotional emotional evoking evoking got to get some got to take some time to calm down chill out and then make a decision as to what is the right course to follow or who to pick or what is the you know the right uh, the right uh, side to go on mm mm-hmm. take right. some time basically yeah 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 i do agree with that uh, although i think that in our decision making as well our emotions do play a huge role and uh, i think it it takes time to sort of yeah, yeah be in connect connection with our own emotions and sort of process what what is this emotion trying to tell me right and right. is this something that uh, is solely emotionally driven or is there any outcome or consequence to this that i would want to have through this action of mine which is why i think it's necessary to have an objective third party like where you always like or on things by them you know um f- f- because you know uh, operating in a vacuum operating as just someone who's driven by your own thoughts and feelings it, it doesn't help you know at least my opinion uh, i think you just need to be more self aware of yourself if that makes sense yeah but where does self awareness come from that's a philosophical question like yeah so it typically just comes from the outside world right the self awareness in my opinion is that you step out of your own body and look at yourself right and and that usually just comes from a third party uh, objective observer you know it could be a friend family member whoever it is hmm. but why do you have to have another person there when you can just step out of your own body and look at yourself can you as in unless you're on insurance or something like but apart from, from that <laughs> yeah like basically basically weighing pros and cons and using the rational mind i think as, as as she said you know humans do have a rational mind as well and when you do become self aware of what emotions are playing at you and why they're triggering you it's it's just another old concept of just getting to know yourself and what drives you what triggers you why do you act certain ways what are your insecurities what are you what 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 are your fears you know if you know all this stuff you will know why you are reacting to certain stuff and you know what is the correct stuff what is what is the correct choice to make according that is the best for you that nobody else will know like i won't know what what are your insecurities or what drives you or you know i won't know anything about you even if you ask me something like yo should i do this i'll just tell you again from my own biases and my own perspective that this is what he's supposed to do 
That's why I think the best thing is just to be more self-aware when it comes to making choices. Yeah, so I, I so this raises the uh, the deeper question of why aren't we taught to think this way as kids, right? Like, why do we just straight jump into math science without even thinking about how to think, you know? And uh, so this that... raises so this raises a deeper question about uh, the education system and yes. what you know. Thank you. So, yes, yes, yes. Go for it. Go for it. Okay, so uh, you're here to rant, bro. Uh, so the education system. So basically. When you look at the education system and society as a whole, the culture, the values, or I'm talking about uh, not ancient culture, but cultures like yeah, you know, this this political party is the best, or what he's saying is the best. It all has to come with the fact that education. We have to realize that education exists in the way to serve the country. Or the serve the entity or the state or whatever. You have this body who is in charge of making sure that the new generation will serve the nation in the way that it wants it to, and uh, which is why you had such an issue back in the 60s. I don't think we've had it here in India at all. We have not had a major questioning the authority kind of a statement till now. In in US, it was. A, Big thing then, and the reason I keep going back to then is because it was a huge movement. It was the counterculture movement, the hippie movement. They questioned authority. They questioned, what is this? Why? Why do we need you guys to tell us how to live? And it it, it really brought, it really made uh, made sense because education then came to be something known as just to bring person, you know, a person who is born, raise him up, and be a perfect citizen. It was not to really help you gain knowledge as such, and uh, it was. It's, it sounds really conspiracy theorist type, like yeah, you know, school education. We don't need education. Yeah, I'm not saying that. I mean, that that's a whole other question if you want to live in society or not. But uh, in the 60s, you had the, the counterculture movement, and education basically tried to play a role in that by stigmatizing. Uh, you know, drugs and all this stuff, recreational drugs, which opened up your mind, as people say, and mm-hmm. others. You know, uh, and also you had to, you had all these figures coming up, preaching other stuff. You had, of course, propaganda. Education is such a good uh, front for propaganda. You had, especially back then when you had the Cold War going on, right? You had students being conditioned to think commies were, sorry, communists were these evil goblins who are going to come and, you know, eat you over and take away your rights to freedom and all. When in reality, it was not so much. So it was just propaganda. And propaganda plays a major role even right now in our today's life. What you're seeing almost through mass media is propaganda, most of it. Like, you have IT cells run by political parties who try to uh, make you look at uh, propaganda propaganda news. You will have uh, a news covering certain segments. You will have news twisting the facts. And uh, that's basically what how powerful a tool uh, propaganda plays in education as well. You will have students taught not to read such books. Uh, you had... You had certain books banned in US. If you rented them out, you were termed as red flag on CIA or something. You know, in this, I think one of them was mind count for something. Yeah, they, they really <laughs> people who yeah people who read such books, they were red flagged by the CIA. Like this guy, we got to keep an eye on this guy. Instead of if a, a person might just be like, yeah, what was this Hitler guy talking about? I just want to see what he's talking about. But no. You're not allowed to see. And that's something that's scary. Like, why am I not allowed to see what you're talking about? I want to just explore. And you have all these insecure governments just trying to keep power. That's what it is. Okay, let me throw a little thought experiment at you. Would you automate the government? Huh? Because, you know, like all these things, like journalism, government, all these things, are crept in because of human bias. Because as human beings, we do have our biases and our belief no, systems. Like, so would you automate the government? I don't think we need a government. Uh, exactly, that's what I'm trying to say. Yeah. No. So you want complete anarchy? So, 
ideally speaking yeah but you can't mm-hmm. apply idealism you heard it here folks you heard it here <laughs> <laughs> no so that's what what we want to talk about when i say the term anarchy i'm sure people are already thinking about me running around burning down stores and you know riots and destruction that's again just completely wrong anarchy is basically saying we do not require a government to tell us how to live we do not require a government we do not require all these uh, rules to tell us how to live if 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 somebody just right now told you you bro like india doesn't exist you know like, do whatever you want just be calm you just keep doing what you're doing now right now and that's what basically the people were questioning back then as well and i think people should question right now but i, I don't see that happening anytime soon i have been hoping for a movement soon but that's not going to happen and that's what anarchy is but as i said that's in, that's ideally you can't apply ideal terms to the real world so in the real world i would say and also because uh coming to why uh, you have Governments as an issue is because human beings are social species. Mm-hmm. Because human beings are social species, there will always be some difference in power. You will have certain people having a bit more power than others. So, I look to the perfect government in the real world would be the the government of the least uh, power gradient or power distribution. down as horizontal as possible it's not vertical mm-hmm. so you are essentially talking about more of a again just for the sake of terms a more of a socialist yeah. economy right right, right. socialist mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. right so but when we think about it you know capitalism socialism we all know that this has been a debate since ages for centuries right. now and our uh, at least according to me i think i have seen certain things that uh, that have helped this capitalistic kind of way of living survive through the ages and it comes with a lot of division of power that is very very vertical rather than horizontal so what do you think would happen if power is distributed more horizontally what do you think how do you think we would be functioning as an economy so okay before that what is power okay like okay. power yeah. over what you know power over people that's basically yeah yeah but I mean, again like that's like a blanket thing right so a little more specific than that what do they control they so what control, don't they control so if you talk about a country with what i talking about present day or hypothetical country with hypothetical people yeah so a, a people a person with power basically is person who can exercise their will on other people and get them to do what they want that's what i feel power of people is when it comes to a government or a country that may be you may talk about varying degrees of power like from a dictator to our democratic prime minister now but there's still some Or power there, there he, you know. So that's that's what I feel is the, what power means in the state. But it's more. It's not about the power of uh, you know. Oh, I'm running this great nation. No, it's more of I'm getting stuff done at my will, and I'm getting other people to do it. And mm-hmm. people in power, and I'm not. I don't know why. I probably just got to experience it, I guess. But people in power want to and really. a desperate to cling on to power mm. so once you get into power i mean people try to stay there so that's really a question as to because i don't none of us have actually faced that so we don't know why but uh, mm. yeah that's what happens that's right, so getting back to neha's question about the horizontal distribution so <laughs> right so we needed a bit there sorry the horizontal distribution i would think would the uh, work most of societal needs so you have a bit of a uh, drawback you have a bit of drawbacks there as in we'll have less of a technological advancement we will have uh, a more society uh, uh, that's that would be a drawback uh, 
uh, I'm talking more of a technological uh, degree, but you will not have that mm-hmm. many, that much progress, so as to say. Right. right. You will have yeah. just uh, a government for the people and just to live peacefully, you know. Mm-hmm. And that sounds like a very simple term and a very, you know, progress-driven society. That got to get there, got to get there, but. The only drawback I see from a horizontal power distribution is that the less yeah. less technology advancement. Because when the only good thing that I would say that came out of capitalism is an advancement in technology, and mm-hmm. uh, uh, the space race is abode to that. Not uh, you had you had technological advancement for political reasons. Uh, Again, that was also tried to made military by Star Wars, uh, space, space. Uh, mm. What is that? The weapon, this weapon system they were planning to have. But uh, coming to the question, yeah, I think uh, the, the horizontal distribution of society, uh, government will work only for the society. That's it. There's no other. If you want technological mm. advancement, then you will have to, you know, try to make it for the society or something like that. Right. Right. I think uh, that makes a lot of sense. Firstly, and how I would want to conclude on that would be to actually, uh, when you when you were talking, I was actually thinking of all the people who I've spoken to in my personal life, and uh, I've asked them, you know, if uh, if money was not a factor in your life, if making a living was not something that you had to do, what would you want to do with your life? Mm-hmm. And majority of them said that they wouldn't want to work. Where, wherever they are working so that really makes us think right that where are we really spending our time where are we investing our mental physical emotional psychological resources every day of our lives and i think it's i wouldn't say there is a right or wrong way here but it's important to question yeah. why we are doing what we are doing and uh, this reminded me of uh, the story i posted on my instagram i think 2 3 days ago about uh, it was a comic where uh, you know one kid is sitting in a classroom and he's turning back to another kid and he's saying to the other kid that uh, they're not going to teach you things that will let you overthrow them yeah, so exactly. i think that was a very interesting comic mm. so yeah that's exactly- i actually like to play your devil's advocate here right so i'm actually in two minds about where this conversation is going so the thing about capitalism is that it lifts people out of poverty it it um, <laughs> gives you an incentive to create more jobs you know it 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 does lead to a more brighter future in terms of uh relative income levels and stuff but the wage gap it is yeah so unregulated capitalism is bad because the increasing wage gap but capitalism is what gives you these products that we actually use that we are actually recording the podcast on you know and we tweet about the ba- the perils of capitalism on our iPhones on Instagram right so you know the uh, i i'm actually in, in two minds about where, where this uh, about the contents of this conversation what do you think about that i guess the question you got to ask yourself right now is do you need this stuff like uh, yeah. see for me personally if there were no jobs or i'm talking about a almost zero capitalist society where i don't i wouldn't have to work i could just you know live my life have fun well then that means i would be free to go and spend time with people who i want to and mm. basically not spend time here and just be with my friends and uh that really makes a question like all these stuff that you're using right now or instagram social media whatever i would call them a distraction that is necessitated by society by the current society mm. because you are away from your friends you have a social media right because you like i don't know want to get entertained you have netflix or something but they're all distractions that are necessitated by society i would say when really all it is like a and this goes on very cliche but a very nice peace and loving harmonious society that's all you require and if it really brings into question that yeah you got to give up this you know the only thing i would be really sad as to the only thing me personally who i would not like giving up is space exploration that is the one thing i would see where things could take a dip apart from that i don't mind giving up everything else it's chill with me 
like honestly speaking. As long as right, I get so the type, of people, type of people I want them. Right. So the issue of privatization versus public funding space exploration, right? So the, I, I actually see um, there's, there's good things and bad things to both sides. And I'm relatively inexperienced in this. So like uh, recently, I, I think I, I sent you this post on Instagram. Yeah, right? yeah, but, yeah. Um, they also said, uh, like, how much was it? 70 billion for the I, I forgot. For 2024 what? space. Was it the, the moon thing? Right, right, right. I forgot. I forgot what he said. What was the exact was... number? Was it 70 billion or something? Yeah. Twenty billion, I think you said. I'm not so sure. Yeah. yeah, it was a huge number of billions. So, uh, yeah, so billions is a huge number. Like, it, it, like it's a small a word, right? but it's a huge, huge number, right? And like the the we, uh, this is the question. So I mean, off, if I you have you. this much money Hello. and you would like to, I can't hear you. Uh, I think we can't hear you. No, I cannot. Can Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Just happy. Can you hear me? Okay. What do you do, man? Oh, I can hear you. What do I? <laughs> what do you do, dude? <laughs> It's okay, we'll edit Do it not touch. No, we're not gonna edit. just keep the silence and uh, it's cool, <laughs> dude. Yeah, just 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 don't touch your device. I just didn't touch just... anything. I just moved the laptop down. Oh, I think I have another. Sorry, I again, know, it's gone. Something cut off. Yeah. So uh, yeah. So the... it's gone. Okay, now it's back. It? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Let's hope it stays. What are we gonna do about that yeah, part? It's hard doing uh, Skype. Yeah. So what was the last thing you heard? What are we going to do about that? The silence bit. Uh, we we'll just leave it in. It's cool. Um, Even this bit yeah, right so, now. Uh, yeah, yeah. Why not? Yeah. Uh, anyway, so <laughs> about the, 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 the space exploration thing, right? So the right. 20 billion, would you use that money to actually help in, help marginalized uh, communities or would you invest that in space exploration? See, first of all, you got to look at how much the government is spending on other stuff. 20 billion is probably like a fraction of it all, you know, not that much that they're spending. Because NASA really, if we talk about US in this case, NASA really had to really beg for funds, especially when it came to the Apollo space program. The only reason they were continued again was because they were, the, the government was motivated to beat the Russians. To be. So NASA really had to come up with reasons to get funding for space. And that is... I think a sad statement. I mean, if if a if a space agency has to beg, come up with the reason like yeah, listen, like uh, we want to go to Mars, and the government goes like why? And like <laughs> honestly speaking, why wouldn't you want to go to Mars? Like really, what? <laughs> yeah, it's so, so cool. Yeah, exactly, and that's a really sad statement. If a space agency just look around like oh bro, like uh, oh yeah, Mars has this, please let us go. Like that's instead of like looking at what else they're spending on, like. Oh, first of all, the military, that, uh, the armaments, mm-hmm. you know, all, all these shady operations, everything, you know, all these money, if you could be put for the society, as you're saying, I would say that's much better than cutting from this already poorly funded space exploration. <laughs> yeah, I feel bad for those guys, man, <laughs> especially yeah. NASA. Like SpaceX in a, is in a slightly better uh, right. position, I guess. Uh, yeah, <laughs> it sucks. So yeah, how uh, would you run a space organization? Where would you want to go? Like, what would be your first, uh, you know, um, action as as a CEO of a space organization? Go to the moon. Go to, go the, to moon. the moon. Why? We've been there before, though. It's okay. I like the moon. Boring. It's a boring it's, it's place. It's me personally, right? So I'm like, I like the moon. So <laughs> You're CEO of a company. <laughs> <laughs> it's not you. Uh, yeah, I, yeah. Probably go to Mars. You know, just chill out, go to space. Uh, We'll be mostly looking to, uh, so because sadly we don't have the technology to do interstellar travel, we can just do Okay, it. cool. Cool. So I am an investor and you want to start a space company. Give uh, me your pitch. What? I guess the only I have like tons I have of money from, from like, uh, only pitch I have is people. go to space and it's cool. <laughs> That's the only pitch I'll actually have. We go to space and yeah. 
what does he need <laughs> what is he speaking we go to space what do you do up down here man like spend money on other stuff like <laughs> that's the point yeah what are you going to do in the earth <laughs> I mean, we have destroyed most of whatever is oh left on God. earth. That's, so, I, yeah. uh, that's really a, I think that's, a, that's another issue we would take up in another uh, that's episode. That's a really sad state of affairs, you know. I, and mm-hmm. So my, what I feel is it's, it's too late, I think. <laughs> I think we have just, you know, destroyed this, our only spaceship earth. And now we, we almost have to flee away and look to other planets. That's what it's come to right now. You know, it's really sad, and yeah, it's, it's, it's just it just shows you what uh, society driven for wrong means can do. Like when you you also had nuclear weapons being built, you had all these you know uh, industrialism and you know coming up with all these honestly unnecessary stuff at the expense of our planet. I mean, if some if somebody came and told people in eighteen hundreds like this, and like if you do this, like no earth. like if you just came out the story like earth will explode or implode i don't think they'd do it i don't know i hope not but it's really sad state Are you following the us election ah uh, the debate and stuff the whole i uh, did watch the debate that was that was my presidential or presidential which one presidential because we had a main man there <laughs> ah yes yes i uh, lord and savior yeah 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 the orange man that was, that was that was absolutely hilarious That was insane. But yeah, I guess uh, let's see what happens, dude. I just, I really hope that you know, uh, like as I hope people join us, as Lem used to say. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. I guess we could uh, end with that, right? Like, Nia, do you have anything to say? I think uh, this was a really good conversation. I think for all of us to expand our minds. Oh, without yeah. the use of substances if not that it could be just like stare at Sid's mane like look at that hair <laughs> you guys can't see it but his hair is fabulous yeah it, it, it's worth it just for that you know? yeah so, I I guess before I before we end I'd also like to say a couple of things one is everyone please you know, question everything oh my god everything question everything and yeah. second is well all you need is love that's it Awesome. Thanks Sid the idealist, the Sid the dreamer, Sid the astronaut. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank, Thank you so, so much, much man. Thanks a lot. Yes. See you dude.